What's good y'all, your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I wanted to dedicate an entire video talking about the Hell in a Cell match we got last night at Bad Blood. After some time to really think about it and reflect on how things played out. That, to me, what we saw last night between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk in that Hell in a Cell match, to me, is one of the better hell in the cell matches we've had in a very long time now i'm not gonna discredit the hell in the cell matches we had with edge recently in his run in wwe um, i believe he had one with finn balor at wrestlemania 39 that was a good match the feud deserved it and then he had a, a hell in a cell match with i believe seth rollins edge and seth rollins that was a good one too and we also got the one with cody and seth rollins and all of those were good in the right at in their right respect like i think those the recent hell in the cells we've had they've been good and some of the feuds demanded it it made sense but this one for me between CM Punk and Drew, I think hits a little bit differently because of how brutal and intense and how they've built this feud essentially since January. And we're in October now. And you can feel the animosity. You knew this was going to get to this point. How intense their hatred had gotten. It reminded me, and it's very ironic, it reminded me of Triple H versus HBK at Bad Blood in 2004 in their Hell in a Cell match. And if you guys remember, their feud had been going on for a while. And it had gotten to the point where it had to end at Hell in a Cell. So it's very ironic that we end up getting another great, essentially blood feud that culminated in a Hell in a Cell at Bad Blood. And they had a lot of pressure. They had to essentially, I guess you can say, put on a great show. Like, if you're bringing back the Bad Blood pay-per-view or the PLE, and you're bringing back Hell in a Cell, there's a lot of pressure to make sure you deliver. And they delivered. In my opinion, I think they delivered on the, the storytelling side, the intensity side, the brutality, and blood. This needed blood. These past few Hell in the Cells, outside of the Finn Balor one, which we know that wasn't supposed to happen. He was supposed to essentially block the ladder that Edge threw at him, but he ended up missing it. His hands went through the rungs, and the ladder hit the top of his head. So he ended up bleeding. That wasn't supposed to happen. And if you guys remember, the ref was trying to, you know, stop the match just for temporary so they can close it up. And they were cutting away from it because they didn't want you to see it, even though. It needed that extra color, but that was accidental. The 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 Hell in a Cell match with Cody, he went out there like a brave individual and wrestled a match with a torn peck. So what made that Hell in a Cell much more intense is because he was wrestling with a torn muscle, and that was legit. So it made everything that Seth did to him that more like impactful because he's legit hurt. So that added to it but this the blood added to this match because you knew they hated each other and they didn't shy away from it they didn't cut away from it hell there was one point in the match where the ref was trying to give drew a towel for it, the blood that was pouring out his face and he threw it away that's how you sell a match and build it up this structure has been one of the deadliest structures ever created in WWE. And once they made it into a pay-per-view, it got neutered. Now it feels like it's in its right position. We shouldn't be getting hell in the cells often. Only when the feud requires it. Because it makes it special. And I think we're, we're back in that time period now where we're not going to see a hell in the cell for a while. And I'm okay with it. But we will see it when there's a feud that demands it. And that's what makes this great. I'm, I'm so very glad that these guys were able 
to put their differences aside. I know they have some history with each other, but they went in there and they told a great story. And, hey, I didn't know this, but apparently when CM Punk hit Drew with the uh, toolbox, he legitimately got busted open. It. Uh, there's a picture uh, of Drew uh, with 16, I think he had to get 16 staples in the top of his head. So he legit got busted open hard way from the toolbox. So the fact he was out there, just a crimson mass. It was just, it was crazy. This is what it should be. Some people are saying this is the greatest Hell in a Cell match ever. And for those who haven't seen some of the other ones, you know what? I can't get mad at you. I cannot get mad at you. But I'm not going to lie to you. This may be one of the, the greatest Hell in the Cells I've seen. Especially in recent years. This one was really good. I don't know where I would rank it. But it could be in my top 10. I got to really think about it. Because there's been some really good Hell in the Cell matches. But this one was good because I just think the feud had been so fantastic. The way they incorporated um, social media. And before I end this video... First and foremost, I got to give a great shout out. And I think everybody should. Drew McIntyre deserves the biggest shout out for sure in this entire feud. Drew McIntyre has done some of his best work in his career, in my opinion, bro. I'm talking about on promos. I'm talking about on in-ring work. I'm talking about his presence on social media. He essentially is the biggest reason, and I love CM Punk, but he's the biggest reason why this feud is so good. They turned an accidental situation of him accidentally injuring CM Punk, and they turned it into something so much greater. And it, and it has spanned all the way from the Royal Rumble to now, in October, Bad Blood. And at one point when CM Punk was out with injury, Drew McIntyre was carrying the feud. He was carrying the feud and has been. Once CM Punk got back, they started bouncing off each other. It got even better. But Drew McIntyre definitely deserves his flowers, especially for the year 2024, because he's been killing it. This is the best stuff I've seen from him, bro. And even in this match, he was so good. When he had the advantage, he was so maniacal, so methodical. Like, he looked like he wanted to kill this man, and he was going to enjoy ending his career. Even the subtle touch, because most of the time when you see a Hell in a Cell match, if somebody bringing out a bag, it's going to be some type of form of tax or something that a wrestler may step in and it's going to hurt them. No, he brought out the friendship bracelet beads. Just to rub it in. That's some good heel work. And credit to CM Punk too. He went out there. And he gave us a classic match. He did his thing. And he looked good out there bro. In a hell in a cell. This was fantastic. This is what I am looking forward to seeing. Going forward. If they, Whenever they do another hell in a cell. I, I have mo way more confidence in knowing. One. It's going to be a feud that demands it. And then two, we're going to see blood because it makes sense. And the story that they're going to tell in that ring, whoever it may be next, whenever it is, I hope it's not for a while, will make sense. And before I get out of here, I did see uh, someone post on social media, on Twitter, um, definitely a rage baiting post for the most part saying, oh, um, the, the the match between Adam Page and, and Swerve was better than this one or whatnot. And look, I know why they posted it because it was going to trigger some people to re respond and stuff like that. And if that's that person's genuine opinion, cool. But I live in a world of two things can be great. I enjoyed that match. Even though there were some spots in there I didn't think they needed to do. It was a car crash. It was insanity and it kind of fit the theme of their feud because motherfuckers were setting houses on fire and actually pulling up to people's cribs with their babies in their in their crib in their cradle like their feud had gotten really personal once you start pulling up to people's houses and you know pulling up 
on their babies or setting people's childhood homes on fire. I get it. Theirs was next level crash out. But the CM Punk and Drew, theirs was not as intense on the crash out, but the match itself was still really, really good. And both matches were great. We got good cage matches, essentially, from both companies with different variations of feuds, but all of them were crash outs. So when I see posts like that, I get what people are trying to do, but I enjoyed both of them. I enjoyed both of them because both of them worked in the concepts of in the in the context of their feuds and what the story they were trying to tell. So I'm I'm not gonna be that person. Like I I definitely enjoyed both of them. If I had to choose which one I enjoyed more, I'm definitely going with CM Punk and Drew, for in the sense of which one I enjoyed more storyline and how everything played to play you know played you know into each other, but. If we're going to talk about some crazy spots that I've never seen in my life, we go with Adam Page and Swerve. Either way, both was great. And it just feels good to be able to say in 2024, Hell in a Cell has finally returned to its true form. But comment down below. Let me know. What do you guys rank this hell in a cell in your all-time hell in a cell list is this in your top five is this in your top 10 or maybe top 15 you know or maybe it's not right y'all let me know just off of what we saw yesterday if you guys got a chance to rewatch it or whatnot y'all let me know what y'all rate or rank this hell in a cell in your all-time list y'all let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace